So, um, and when I run this, okay, so this is control four. So let me show you this script. Okay. In this case, um, <coughs> in this initialize variable, I really didn't need it for this now. That was my way of trying to hide something until it, uh, the user uh, takes an action. But there it is. So um, this is essentially the constructor of the controller, by the way. Anything, any code that appears here is executed when the controller is loaded. And when the controller is loaded is when you specify that controller. I can have like five controllers in this file. But the only one that's executed is the one that I, or the only ones are the one where I say ng dash control. And here I'm defining a function. And can anybody guess when this line of code is executed? Uh, yeah, it's not right away. Um, I'm, this was a little strange for me the first time I saw it. We're all used to seeing declarations in JavaScript that say function square root, you know, brace, blah, blah, blah. Here I'm actually saying um, in my scope I have something, I have a variable called load user, and load user is a function. And anything, any function that you call from an event, you have to declare in this way, because you're saying that function lives in the scope, and, that, and that's what makes it call <coughs> from that scope. So if I flip back over, to the document, which hopefully you all can read. Um, the, this function here, load user, lives in the scope, and it's it's uh, it's um, defined in this user controller, uh, which is defined here in controls for that data. So. Um, a mistake that, that I used to make all the time until I kind of got into the habit. The, the, the mistake I used to make is I would I would do things like this. You know, I would forget to define it in the scope, or I would just do this, where I would you know define the function the old-fashioned way. And um, Visual Studio is actually smart enough to figure out. Maybe this is Richard. It, it's telling me that I'm not using this for one thing. I spelled it wrong. But long story short, you, you basically have to, to to make a function visible. You have to say dollar sign scope function name equals. So you can go back and make this work. So scope is what gets exported out, and that's that's what's available to the. Uh, uh, yeah, more or less. It's the it's the the object, the mechanism. Let's say it's the object that is used to sort of hold the data, hold the model. Um, I almost said that the scope is passed to the uh, the view, and it it basically is. Uh, Angular is much more sophisticated and complicated than that. But basically, the scope is presented to your view. It's like, here you go, your scope. So everything that's bound to the view has to be you know, dollar sign scope dot whatever. So um, anyway, so let me run this very sophisticated script here. OK. So. Uh, right, I click the button. It sets that variable equal to yeah, scope user name Larry. And then I set this. I say, oh, I'm initialized now. So uh, my uh, my view here says only show this button when it's not initialized. So. Ask again. Question to the room, just on your code. Maybe somebody in the room knows the answer. I don't, and I bet I bet they don't know. Is anybody good at Angular? Awesome in Angular. There he is. Okay, he's gonna have it. Let's see the code. 
Okay, we're going to find out. And maybe you guys know, so I'm not trying to put you on the spot. Right? Yeah, some of these things, I, okay. I, my answer is probably going to be, I don't remember. My question is to you. This, this NG click with Angular parses that, is that a separate scope? Like, does this button get its own scope? NG click, no, but directives can have a separate scope. Does the NG click directive to declare a new scope for that button? No, it will have the same scope as the, as the parent. Why is that? Well, it's kind of complicated. It's kind of how like the directives are set up. You can either like have the scope of the parent, or um, you can build your own that creates your own scope. So when when you declare directives, you can you can say this directive scope comes will appear. When you when you create um, like when you write the directive, you can do that. Because you can create your own directive. Too. Uh, yeah. That's super cool. Okay. Yeah. So it turns out that they do. Yeah, in practice, I found that, I mean, there's a, I'll show this in a minute, there's a directive called ng repeat. In practice, I don't know if you understood what they just talked about, I mean, or it just went, shh. What I found is this idea of scope, it, it just kind of makes sense. Like, you don't think about it a lot. Or maybe you think about it when you're first learning it, but after that, it's just intuitive. Like, here, the scope is sort of, I wouldn't call it global, but it, it it's common to you know, most of the page. And then I'll show you a directive in a minute called repeat, which is like a repeater. It's how I generate a list. And, uh, it'll show us this report later on. I'm sure you use an ng repeat. Or but in there, the scope is kind of what you would expect. And, and it's the thing I'm repeating. You know, and it, like rarely, in, from what I've done so far, did I have to you know, walk up the scope tree or any of that. I'm not saying never, but it, it, they've done a really good job of making this pretty simple. So, for most most applications, so that would be event. That, that's like my script number five, which is my final script. Um, no, it's not. Two more. So um, here, I have added two things. I've added uh, this thing I was just talking about, this, this directive called ng repeat. And this is how I can, I mean, it's just simple for each. Um, is that big enough? I have a feeling it's not. So, one more. Okay. Uh, and actually, getting back to your question. So, what's going to happen is the user is going to click on this button, load users. Um, it will load the users, and it's actually going to load them from a RESTful service, too. So, I'm clicking mouse and wrong things. Yeah, anyway, so let me get back to the script for a second. It's going to load these users, and that will be just a, a, an array of some really simple data structure. In this scope, this directive does exactly what you think it's going to. It's going to walk through for each user in users, and it's going to inject you know, user.name. So this user, this user is this. This user's uh, variable, you know, the question would be where the heck is that defined? Um, is defined here. So what's going to happen is my load users function is actually going to use a, a very useful uh, Angular service that you might be finding yourself using a lot. This corresponds to the jQuery called Ajax. I, it's been a while, but I'm pretty sure. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. I think the uh, yeah, what do they call it? Ajax plugin. I mean, I'm not sorry, but a jQuery plugin. Right. So jQuery has this great plugin. You can, you know, you can fetch data using GETs. You can push data back. I mean, it's very, very cool. And they basically kind of stole it. In fact, Angular, uh, Angular has taken the useful parts of jQuery and they, they included it. And they call it JQ Lite. And they say you don't need jQuery. In fact, it's an anti-pattern to use jQuery and Angular at the same time because 
Unless you're converting your app over. Well, yeah, or unless you're bringing over jQuery, because a lot of jQuery stuff is already Angular. So, yeah. If you really need jQuery for something, then yeah, you can do it. But if you really don't need it, then you know, if you know that you can get things done with Angular, then just use Angular. If you are using some jQuery abstraction that is not there in Angular, then you know you could use. At least that's what they. By the way, I said it's an anti pattern use jQuery and Dingo at the same time. I have used it, so if it works, and I believe they recommend you include Angular then jQuery. I don't remember. So it, it you know, it, don't worry about it. It, it will work. Anyway, um, right, load users, uh, let me point something out here. Um, Angular has this, I don't know, it, it's very spare. Uh, the way that you, Angular has a, like 20 different built-in, they call them services, and one of them is, you know, the HTTP uh, RESTful service, uh, service. Uh, there's other things as well, like for reading the URL and, and doing all kinds of cool things. It doesn't all come built-in. Um, you have to basically tell your controller, I'm going to use this service. Um, which is kind of cool uh, for many reasons. Also, and I don't know if you're going to get into this, um, Angular allows you to unit test, so sort of, it's sort of built in. And, and when you're unit testing your controllers, you can actually take things out. And you can, instead of actually calling a web service, you just uh, you know, fake it out and supply data. I won't get into that. But anyway, there's my familiar scope. I'm telling Angular essentially I'm going to have a service here. I'm using that service. Uh, real simple HTTP get. The URL is users. Um, on success, uh, do what I did before and take the data and stick it in this variable. And then that data that I stuck in there is going to every user's in this array. And, you know, so. None of this is like real GWiz stuff in demo terms, but I think it's good. So anyway, so I'm going to run this. Okay, so there's nothing in here. I click on users. Bam, there's, there's my users. Um, I might attempt once again to get <coughs> there. This is my um, Chrome Rope Tools. And I just wanted to show you a couple of things. Let this page again. Um, as soon as I click Load Users, it, it used the verb get, so it went to the service. There they are. There's my there's my sophisticated JSON data structure. Um, for what it's worth, would actually work a lot. It automatically will inject the HTTP, HTTP header to prefer JSON over XML, um, which is, you know, I think it's great. Um, so. And I'll show one more little demo. Um, okay. Last demo. I'm going to show. Angular has this thing that I really like. Um, I mean, you just saw me fetching data, and you saw that it was kind of. I wouldn't call it verbose. It can get verbose in a real-world application. Um, you know, I'm, I'm specifying the verb, and I'm saying what to do, and so on and so forth. Um, but what they've done is they've taken RESTful web services. Does everybody know what a RESTful web service is, or REST? Okay. 
Um, for those who don't, it's uh, it's basically, you know, I hesitate to say this because a lot of people get this wrong, probably me included, but for, for a developer, it's, a, it's like an agreed upon convention, more or less, of accessing resources um, where there's sort of a built-in routing mechanism where I can, and it's predictable, so I can say, go to this URL and get all the users. And go to the same URL and actually this time I'm going to append, you know, one, two, three, four, the user ID. And then, um, so in this case I want you to get user one, two, three, four. And then using the different verbs and their methods in HTTP, I can post data, I can uh, put, and, one of them is to create a new record, one is to, so you've got all the CRUD operations, so it, it, it's, a, it's a great thing to be using RESTful services. And what Angular has done is they have this really simple way of allowing you to wire those things up. So here's my familiar thing. I believe that my code here is identical to what it was a second ago. My controller is different, so I'm going to go over to that. Okay, and see what I've done here. Um, I'm saying that my user, that, anyway, this service is called resource. And in this case, it doesn't come built in. I have to actually make explicitly include this script. But once I've done that, and I've included this in my controller, this service in my controller, then the default action here is to just grab all the users. I can go to this URL called users and pull them all in and assign it here to this thing. And what you can see is that this is done asynchronously. So if this takes 10 seconds, you know, that's, that's great. And I don't want to get too much into it, but it's just kind of magic, really. Um, there's, it, Using a mechanism called a promise, uh, I think in other languages they call it the futures, um, Angular is able to, in the future when this, when this service comes back, it's able to wire this up. And it's really cool if, you, if you're writing this, you can inject like an artificial delay into the web service, like 10 seconds. And then you can click your button on the form, and then you can see it come back and pop it 10 seconds later. And I mean, that's, that's the code right there. So it, it does the same thing that that other script did, but it's just implicit because it, it raised it up a, a level or two of abstraction. Um, something I can do here, which I, I'm not going to, is they have this convention to where you know, again, with the, the, the RESTful services where I talked about how you can specify a particular entity, you can actually bind it in this way, um, and, and it will go into your model, and if you have something called scope, well, let's just pretend, dot ID equals one, two, three, four, and uh, it's a different method here say put for post or something. It's smart enough just to do the, you know, all the interpolation here. It's smart enough to go into the scope and read this ID and throw it in here. I mean, it's just, it, in a real world example, this is like really nice to have. And hopefully you can, you know, use your imaginations here. So let me get back to my, finally run this down. And so it, it's just going to do what it did before. I said it's just going to do what it did. <laughs> you know, I, this is the, I actually made a tiny change at the last minute to this demo, and I heard it broken. So. Um, but suffice it to say that I not made my tiny change. Um, it would have just loaded up. Oh, initialized true. Oh, yeah, thank you. And actually, the change I made, 
I have my numbering convention here. You can't see this. This is six resource HTML. I was actually calling the wrong script. So this code has never been run before. Thank you. Luckily, hopefully it's simple enough that so well anyway. The, did you see anything else? Yeah, it's something's broken. But the whole point was just to show you that um, just to show you that it, they make it really easy. And there's examples on the Angular JS tutorial. They do a great uh, job showing how this is used in practice. My whole point is you can take some of that HTTP code and smash it down in the most common use cases are sort of automatic. So um, I think you need to I think you need to call Git on the on the Did, resource, right? No, after yeah. I mean, if you want to, you know. Yeah, it, I'm going to take I'm going to time box this and, and sure. take like one minute. <coughs> so. Has everybody or anybody seen the um, the, the the website yet? It's AngularJS.org. Um, this feature here. Here I'm going to. I guess this is resource. See how every time I type a key, it it shrinks the list down, and that's a built-in feature. Um, they call that a filter. I, I'm not going to show you an illustration, but. It's another one of those things where to, to get that to work, they put a pipe symbol and then, you know, whatever this thing is called, let's, let's say this is called, you know, whatever uh, is bound to this search box, search term. So, Q. Google, they'll use a lot of Q. Before. Oh, okay. For this or for what I'm trying to do? Alright. It's my time box. If somebody has the answer right away, that would be great. Um, maybe now's a great time. To switch over to the other slide deck, because uh, he's got a, a more sophisticated, like real-world example, in, um, where he's using a lot of the features I talked about, like the RESTful services, and I think you've got, you know, sorting and filtering. And, and no, so. I'm not having okay. it. It's just the, the RESTful service and using yeah. routes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 